welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be a reading vlog for the Monster in His Eyes trilogy by J.M. Darhauer. This is actually going to be a reread for me. This is one of my favorite trilogies of all time and I thought it would be fun to reread it and annotate it and vlog the entire thing. I feel like I don't really have vlogs where I gush about my favorite books. I feel like a lot of my vlogs tend to be either like really chill, relaxing vlogs or I have other vlogs that are just me like finishing a book and not fully enjoying it. I've been really wanting to reread this trilogy and annotate it so I thought I might as well vlog it. I read this trilogy back in fall of 2018. I'm pretty sure I talked about this series in my October wrap-up of 2018. I think it was my favorite books of that year as well. I did reread this back in 2022 but I really just wanted to annotate it and reminisce about my favorite series and even though it has been two years since I've read it I do forget quite a bit so I'm actually very excited to reread it. I will try to keep this vlog as spoiler free as possible but I will be alluding to some things and probably reading some quotes and stuff so if that does bother you or if you feel like that's giving away too much then this may not be the vlog to watch but I'm really excited to reread and annotate this trilogy and I just want to give more love to this trilogy because it is genuinely in my opinion one of the best mafia romances I have ever read. It is kind of more of like a hitman romance but with like a little bit of mafia elements. The series did come out in 2014 so it is 10 years old and I wouldn't say it's dated but it does have that 2014 feel. I just feel like these books should be way more popular than they are. I think that they deserve much more attention and hype and love. I want them to have way more success so that we could get cover changes because I do not like these covers. So I kind of want to push ahead this movement of making this trilogy more mainstream I guess and I just need new covers. I, I really do not like these covers. This man is not Ignazio. He is not Ignazio to me. I just feel like these covers don't really reflect the story so I, I want new covers. So the first book is Monster in His Eyes, the second book is Torture to Her Soul, and then the third book is Target on Our Backs. This is a dark romance mafia hitman trilogy and it does follow one couple. It essentially follows Carissa who is a college student and one day she goes to her class and I think she forgets her phone in her class so she tries to go back and get it and she overhears her professor with this other man who is very mysterious and they kind of have like a threatening conversation and Carissa overhears it and this mysterious man sees her they kind of have an intense moment and suddenly this man is in Carissa's life. He is interested in her, wanting to spend time with her. Ignazio is a very mysterious, quiet, reserved man and he's definitely hiding a lot from Carissa. This is also an age gap romance. I think Carissa is like 18 or 19 and Ignazio I think think is in his early 30s. I'll let you know for sure when I'm reading because I don't fully remember but they do have an age gap. I think that's it for my intro. I'm sorry it was so long. I just kind of wanted to go over things very quickly but let's get on to the vlog.
I'm currently halfway through my reread of Monster in His Eyes. I'm on page 175, about to start chapter 12. I have a lot of annotations going on so far. I definitely don't remember a lot, which is kind of surprising, but there was like one scene that I kind of mixed up with a different scene. And it's so funny reading this book now knowing what does happen later on in this book and in the rest of the series and there is like the odd little bit of foreshadowing which is great and sometimes i just feel like naz is so funny with the things that he says because it is alluding to something else oh for the age difference uh it is on page 30 they talk about their ages carissa is 18 and Ignacio is 36. So there's an age gap of 20 years and you definitely can feel that Carissa is a lot younger than Naz. Like she is definitely a little bit more innocent and naive, but also you kind of get the vibe that she plays that up a little bit, especially as the book goes on. Personally, I love mafia romances where the female character is very innocent and naive and she does not know what's going on. I love that slight element of mystery. It kind of just adds to the atmosphere of the book, if that makes sense. You are learning things at the same time as the main character is. I love mafia romances like that and this is definitely that. Obviously it's different for me because this is a reread for me so I know everything that's about to happen. That is one thing that I loved about this when I first read it is that you were given little hints at Naz and like who he is and the kind of work that he does but you're not given everything. So you kind of feel like you're inserted into the book like the main character is because she's figuring things out at the same time as you are if that makes sense i forget how intense their i love you scene is that was crazy for some reason i thought that scene took place when they go to vegas but it takes place before that but they go to vegas later on um i'm probably about to read yeah i think i'm like maybe 50 pages away from reading about them going to vegas which is a whole ordeal like i can't wait to reread that i forget how immersed i get into this world and with these characters i just want to keep reading and it's hard because obviously i'm annotating so it takes me a little bit longer to read but i just can't stop reading like it's so addicting to be into this world jm darhauer does such a great job keeping you interested and giving you small like hints and glimpses at the characters also this first book is just in chris's point of view and the second book i believe is just in naz's point of view and then the third book is in both of their povs which is very interesting and something that i love about the series he makes me feel like the sun the world revolving around me and i'm not ready to invite any others into our universe that is on page 96 on page 85, this scene I loved, um, they're like talking on the phone and he's like, you looked beautiful today. And she's like, where, where did you see me? Like I was, we weren't, we didn't see each other. He's like, I saw you in my dreams. And then he does finish it by saying, I do know you looked beautiful today though, because you always are. He's so smooth. He's so smooth. On page 142, 143, I really liked this like section, this quote. He's a gentle giant, harmless and soft like a teddy bear, except deep down, I know he's not. And when his eyes cut my way and I see the darkness on the surface, I'm reminded that this man hangs out with the monsters and one might even exist inside of him. So like our girl Krissa is not that naive. I think she pretends to be a lot more naive than she is because she knows that Ignazio is a dangerous man.
Like I know it's about to happen, but I forget like how it all goes down. So I'm kind of having like adrenaline right now. It honestly feels like I'm reading it for the first time again, where it's like so intense and like dramatic. <laughs> oh my god, I feel so bad for Krista. I love him so much, but I forget how evil he could be. I forget. I'm reading too fast, I can't end this piece. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Naz is so funny. He is so funny. And I'm done. So I obviously finished my reread of Monster in His Eyes. And I just loved it. I think I gave this book five stars when I first read it. For my reread two years ago, I also gave this five stars and I'm gonna stick with my five star rating. I just love this book. I love how mysterious it is, how atmospheric it is. I feel like even though this is kind of a mafia hitman type of story, the first book is kind of just a mystery. I'm sorry if you can hear a lot of noise. My cat is currently having the zoomies and she is playing right now. I would totally understand if people had complaints that this book is slow because I do feel like it is pretty slow, but it kind of builds for the next two books. And I know that's annoying because I personally don't like to read books that you have to read the second book before it gets good or whatever. I'm not saying that with this series because I don't think that like the second or third book is better than the first book. I think I actually really like the third book the most, I think. We'll find out during my reread. So this one is a little bit more slow paced, I guess. Also because we're just in Carissa's point of view. So you're just seeing what she's seen. You're not really seeing what Naz is doing and what he's up to. I also feel like even though there's a lot of revelations in this book, you still really don't know what or who Naz is, which is very interesting. It has been two years since I've read this, and I don't have the greatest memory, even of my favorite books. Like, I just don't remember things that well. I don't know why I was still shocked at page 255, 256, with everything that happens. I don't know why, like, I was so surprised when that happened, because, like, I think it kind of comes out of nowhere in a way, but also it just makes complete sense. I love how Naz's nickname for Carissa is Sweetheart. I do love that. Oh, he does also call her Jailbird, which is funny. Around page 310, I totally forgot about like who's who and I guess like the things unfolding. I totally forgot about like key people, I guess. Also on page 310, when Carissa and Naz are talking about everything that kind of happened, and he is literally telling her that she like ignored everything and that she shouldn't be surprised, which is very interesting. Also, I totally forgot the part around like 326, 327. Crazy, crazy stuff that happens in this. I love Naz and I do love Carissa. She has a lot of growing up to do, but I love reading about her choosing to ignore things or just like not really look at them for what they are. On page like 299, they're talking about like someone that died and Naz is like, oh, the cops think I did it. And Chris is like, that's just crazy. 
And then she's like, I expect him to agree to laugh it off, but he says nothing. He makes no noise at all. And it's just like, girl, <laughs> actions speak louder than words. Anyways, this was fun to reread, and I'm excited to reread Torture to Her Soul tomorrow. I am halfway through Torture to Her Soul, which is the second book in the Monster and His Eyes trilogy. You're still following Chris and Naz, but this book is in Naz's point of view. So you're kind of following him more day to day and what he's doing. It picks up pretty much immediately after the first book because that one kind of ends on a slight cliffhanger a little bit. I just love how unique this series is and the fact that the first book follows Carissa's point of view, this one follows Naz's, and then the third one follows both of their POVs, and I just don't ever really see that in romance books or specifically like mafia romance books. My camera died and I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, the different POVs. I just feel like that is something that is so unique and special about this series and it works for the series as well and it's just something refreshing. I feel like I remember a lot more from the first book than I remember anything else about the series. I honestly don't remember much that happens in this book. You get to learn a lot more about Naz and about his story, about who he is, and his thought process and just the way that he's wired. It is also interesting to see Carissa through Naz's eyes. And I feel like in the beginning, she is kind of acting like a brat. She's acting very much like her age, 19, and she's a little bit of a brat. And you can see, or you can feel their age difference, if that makes sense. As and Chris are both very different characters, and you can really feel that through the author's writing and the way that she writes their POVs and how different they are. Oh, I forgot to say this about the first book, Monster in His Eyes. I totally forgot how intense their sex scenes are like they are quite heavy page 94 95 i'm obsessed with naz is basically just describing how much he loves carissa and how beautiful he thinks she is like i've literally annotated like the whole page you probably won't be able to see because of the lighting but i love this page everything about her is beautiful to me but she's most beautiful when she's doing nothing She's pensive and passive, a calm breeze in the middle of a storm that somehow pacifies me. If I were hard pressed to explain why I fell in love with her, that would be my answer. Because she's beautiful. And I don't mean it in a superficial way, you're not going to find her on the cover of a magazine. She's more the kind you find at a museum, on a painting, or a piece of literature. Her beauty is her soul. I love that page. There's a lot more, but I didn't want to read the whole thing. Here's another smooth line at page 168. You want to know what I think about when I look at you, Carissa? I think there's nobody else like you in the world. He just has a way with words. On page 72, we have another beautiful little section here. I'll give her anything. I'll tear my fucking chest open with my bare hands, rip on my heart, and hand it to her if that's what she needs. All she has to do is tell me. All she has to do is ask. She could bark out a million demands, and I would work myself to the death, making them all happen. This man is so obsessed with her, and he will not let her go. And there has been a little bit of action so far. Like, I know there's more to come. I'm excited to see that all unfold again. I'm at the part where they're about to go to Italy for the first time. They're going on a little trip together. I'm excited to see what happens in Italy, because I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember anything that happens. Ignazio loves Carissa so much that he went to a place that he hasn't been to in years just to give 
her a little bit of himself and to explain his upbringing and like what his childhood was like kind of i guess you see like a small glimpse of that oh it's on page like 128 he goes back to a place and it is not a good interaction Krissa finally kind of understands a little bit more about naz so i love how he showed that side of himself to her and i just really love how naz would do anything for her there are moments in their relationship where you see like this lighter kind of more charming charismatic guy and then you see him a couple pages later doing some horrific things and it just like reminds you that this man is scary this man is a scary guy but he's also so sweet i wouldn't say he's romantic but in the same way i do think he is romantic because he notices everything about carissa and he would do anything to just make her life easier she basically failed college and i think she like had a scholarship and she failed her classes so she could no longer attend college but he literally paid it off for her like hello she didn't even ask him she didn't even tell him about it he just saw the paper and he went to go pay it for her i'm gonna go keep reading i am determined to finish the rest of it tonight i did kind of get a late start reading today and i was very tired so i was definitely slow at reading today it is seven o'clock so hopefully i can finish this at a decent time tonight I did finish Torture to Her Soul the night or the day that I was reading it, but I didn't film after that because it was kind of late and I just wanted to go to bed. And then yesterday I wasn't feeling good and I had to go to the doctor, I had to do a blood test and everything. So it was a very long day yesterday and kind of stressful and I just did not feel good. So I didn't read yesterday nor update you guys about this book but today i'm going to finish this video i'm going to read the last book and finish this vlog but torture to her soul i loved it was very action-packed towards the end again there's just like an adrenaline rush that happens at the end it's so action-packed and you just don't really know what's coming and even though i've read this twice before it is still shocking and it still gives me adrenaline i'm of course going to give this five out of five stars again i just really love this book really love the series i loved the conversations that naz had with his parents specifically his dad he had like a very kind of heart to heart conversation with his dad which i really enjoyed page 342 to 344 is honestly the most terrifying Naz has ever been to me. There is just something so scary, specifically on page 344. You can tell that this man is done with everything and he just doesn't care. The whole time I was reading this chapter, I guess, chapter 22, I just got like chills because I was like, this is so scary. And it kind of reminds me of like a scene that you would see in a TV show where the character is just like so smart with what he's about to do and he just like you can tell he's thought it through but also at the same time he hasn't thought it through if that makes sense like his plan seems very planned out but also not at the same time also the last two pages before the epilogue made me cry i don't know pets always make me emotional especially considering i have you know a cat so anything to do with pets makes me cry it's not a bad thing by the way it, it's a good thing there's nothing bad that happens to pets in this series we got like a bonus scene at the back here after the epilogue i don't know if this is in every single copy or if it's just in my edition i'm not sure but i'm kind of confused on when this takes place it says over the past year so i'm assuming that's a year after the ending i don't know i'm kind of confused on the timeline regarding the last book but i'm sure i'll figure it out once i start rereading that one but i love this little bonus scene it's very cute i'm very excited to read the last book which i'm gonna start right away and that is 
Target owner backs. I actually ran out of sticky tabs so I have to wait for them to arrive. I ordered them like two nights ago so they should arrive today hopefully and I can continue my tabbing journey. I don't have any gray tabs left. I used all of the gray ones so I had to order some more tabs. Anyways I'm going to go start my reread of this and I'm very excited to read from both Krissa and Naz's point of view. It's going to be really nice to see what is going on with the both of them at the same time. I'm currently halfway through Target on our backs. I am at page 177. This one is definitely way more action packed. You kind of get action right at the first chapter. Yeah, by page like 12, you are thrown into some action. So this one is definitely a little bit more fast paced in that way. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear water running. It's my cat's like water bowl, it makes noises, unfortunately. I love going back and forth between Naz's and Carissa's POV. I love how we finally kind of get them together at the same time, same timeline and everything. Oh, I forgot to mention this about Torture to Her Soul, the second book. Sometimes there'll be a conversation between Naz and Carissa. He'll make a reference to like the past and something that happened from the first book when I was in Carissa's point of view and so you kind of get his thoughts and feelings on like a specific scene that happened it's nothing like long or it's not like a flashback or anything it's just like a very quick like oh when this happened this is what I was doing or this is what I was feeling I liked that little reference to the first book and him kind of explaining more of his ways I guess. Yeah for this one we have a lot more action going on. There's some new characters that are introduced, kind of some suspicious characters. Carissa and Naz are way more flirtatious in this book. They're having a lot of banter and a lot of flirting scenes which I'm really enjoying. Oh and I said I was confused by the bonus scenes at the end of Torture to Her Soul and I was kind of confused on like how it blended in with the beginning of this book but it actually kind of explains it. It's actually really hard to talk about this book without spoiling things. I can't really say much honestly which is very annoying. Let's see if I have any good quotes to share. Chris is talking about how her friend has kind of seen someone new and Chris I think is like really attractive and she kept she like goes on and on about like how she thinks this new guy is like really hot and Naz's response is, if you're trying to get me to kill him, all you have to do is ask. Oh, that was on page 132, by the way. They have like funny moments like that, that I absolutely love. Like they just have little like flirty moments in here, which makes this book way more fun than their other books. Parissa kind of starts like skipping classes a little bit. She's got a lot going on. And Ignazio starts bugging her. He's like, all the skipping classes can't be good for your grades, he says. So I guess we'll see if it's a problem when report cards come in. I laugh at that. What are you gonna do, ground me? No, but I might spank you. Promise? He stares at me, he's not laughing. 
That's on page 97. Also on page 96, there's a mention of General Hospital, which makes me laugh so much because I used to love General Hospital. I would watch it every day. It usually was on like right when I got home after school or I would like miss some of it when I got home. But they have a reference to uh, General Hospital and Sunny who is like kind of like the mob boss in General Hospital. I thought that was so funny that there was a little reference to that in here. Oh, there's a nice little quote on page 67. Chris is talking about just how much she loves Naz and I really loved this part right here. Naz is the kind of guy that once he walks into your world, he throws it off his axis. So even if he walks back out, nothing spins the same anymore. I love him despite everything with every fiber of my being. On page 61, I really liked this little part. I walk out and all I hear is laughter, loud carefree laughter, shaking my head. I can't help the smell that fights to break free. It's completely ridiculous. It's probably the most absurd few minutes of my life, but the sound of her laughter, of her happiness does something to me, nothing else can. It cuts straight through my darkness. With her, I almost feel light. I'm just really loving Krissa and Naz's relationship in this one a lot more. Yeah, I'm gonna go keep reading and hopefully finish it very soon. finished target on our backs and of course i'm also giving this five out of five stars i absolutely loved it it was way more action-packed and you know it was just kind of wrapping everything up it was wrapping up the entire story so it just went by a lot faster i got very emotional towards the end the epilogue is just so beautiful i'm gonna start crying God, I feel so sad now that I finished rereading this trilogy. I'm definitely going to be in a reading slump now, but that's okay because I had a blast rereading these books. I got very emotional on page like 320, 321. Um, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> then I also got very emotional on page 324 and I'm going to start crying. Oh my God. Carissa just has such a beautiful conversation with Naz's father and I don't know, I, I just love when authors and when books bring things back from the first two books in the series and kind of tie that in. It's just so beautiful and it makes the journey just more worth it, if that makes sense. I love this trilogy so much and I am so happy that I reread it and I vlogged it and I was able to finally annotate it and just fall back in love with these characters in the story. Like look at that. That's so satisfying to just have like one of my favorite series to be annotated and personalized and I am so happy. <laughs> But I'm also so incredibly sad that it is over now and I want to reread it all over again already. Obviously, I highly, highly recommend this series if you haven't read it yet. I hope this vlog wasn't too spoilery. I tried to be very vague with my quotes and my explanation and my thoughts and stuff. So I hope that I didn't reveal too much and that you are still able to read this series and enjoy it for yourself. If I were to rank the books, I think I would go Target on our backs being my favorite then monster in his eyes and then torture to her soul would be my third favorite just because this one is a little bit more slow paced and their relationship is just kind of like frustrating in the beginning of this book so i don't love that but i love naz's point of view and getting to know him on a deeper level and to see how much he loves carissa so even though they're ranked differently they're honestly all equal to me i just love this series so much and 
I can't recommend it enough and if this is the one book that you read because of me like I will be so incredibly happy because this is like my favorite series ever and this is the series that I want people to know me by if that makes sense like this is my series if i could make this whole series my personality i would i just love it so much and i cannot stop gushing about it i don't think i have anything else to say about this series i feel like i really talked through it and talked so much about it thank you so much for watching i had so much fun filming this and rereading my favorite books and if you decide to pick up this trilogy because of me i hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I think that's it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!